Hey, what's going on ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to the Learn Roblox Studio series. And today we are actually gonna start learning scripting. Before we get too deep into it, if this video does help you guys out or you guys do enjoy it, make sure you guys hit the like button. Additionally, if you guys wanna get notified every single time I post a brand new Roblox development video, make sure you guys hit the subscribe button and turn those post notifications on. I also do have a Patreon. If you guys would like to support me or gain access to all the scripts that I make in some of my other videos, there's a link down below in the description to the Patreon. You guys can go check it out and support me if you're feeling kind enough. Finally, I do have a link down below in the description to the actual Roblox documentation on the lesson that we're going to be going over today. If you guys would like to follow along with me, there's a link down below in the description. You guys can click that as well and follow along with it. With that being said, let's get into it. So introduction to coding. In the last episode, you learned how to create and manipulate parts in Roblox Studio. It's time to use the code to make them do things. In this project, you'll use a script to make a platform appear and disappear. You could use this in platforming games to span a gap, challenging players to time their jumps carefully to get to the other side. So they don't actually specify if we should make a brand new project or if we should use our pre-existing one. So I'm just going to start up the game that we made in the previous episode and we can continue from there. If you guys don't know how to do this, you guys can either go to recent or you should be able to go to my games. And as long as you sort by my games up at the top left, then you can go ahead and click the game that you previously published. Otherwise, you can make a brand new game as well. It's really not that hard. I'd recommend starting off with the base plate, but let's go ahead and start up our previous game and we'll resume from here. Setting the scene. First off, you'll need a part to act as the platform. Making a moving part should be familiar to you from the last episode. You don't need a complicated game world aside from the platform. You just need a gap for where your player wants to jump across to. What I'm going to do is we're going to go to workspace. And right here, one of our last parts is actually the cylinder right here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to actually duplicate it by hitting control D while having the objects selected. Then I'm going to move it over a little bit and we'll have a little bit of a wider space. And then in between these two parts right here, we are actually going to make the disappearing part. Okay. So now that we have this, I'm going to go back to the workspace and we're going to insert another part. This time it's going to be a sort of rectangle but let's go ahead and make it a little bit wider so we can bridge the gap between these two parts there we go that looks pretty decent and that definitely looks like players should be able to jump in between the two parts now then what i'm going to do is i'm going to make sure to anchor this part as it should be and then we also want to name it disappearing platform as well so we can click on this part or you can also hit f2 as well or you can even right click it and then click rename as well and then we're going to name it disappearing platform so now we can easily distinguish what part we're going to be looking for or working with when we want to work with the disappearing platform and we have it right here inside of the workspace. Now what we're going to do is we're actually going to insert a script directly into this part. Let's make sure that we find the part inside of the workspace inside of our explorer. Then we're going to click the plus icon right next to it and then we're going to insert a script. Code in Roblox is written in a language called Lua and is stored and run from scripts. You can put scripts anywhere. If you put scripts in a part, Roblox will run the code in the script when the part is loaded into the game. So we just inserted a script script inside of this part and let's go ahead and rename the script to disappear and then we're going to delete all of the code that's already inside of here which is the print statement right there so we'll remove that so we have a blank script we're now going to create our first variable it's a good idea to start off your script by making a variable for the platform so the platform that we're referring to is the part right here and we're actually going to create a variable for this specific part a variable is a name associated with a value once a variable is created it can be used again and again you can change the value as needed as well in Lua we actually create create a variable like this. We say local, then we say the variable name, and we equal that to a variable value. So remember, a variable is made up of a name and a value. Currently, we have an error right here, but just ignore this for now. Just remember, we always have the name on the left-hand side of the equal sign, and we always have the value on the right-hand side of the equal sign. Local just means that the variable is only going to be used in this part of the script. So now what we're going to do is we're going to delete this, and we're now going to create another variable. And this time, we are going to name the variable platform. So we're going to say local platform equals and now we're going to set the value of the platform variable we're creating and the value that we're going to set is script dot parent now script dot parent is used to find the object the script is located inside of so remember script is inside of this part right here and we can actually look back inside of our game and we can see this is the part that we have selected right now this disappearing platform and then if we look where our script's located is located inside of this part so script dot parent the parent of this script is this part right here you can also figure out the parent by clicking on the script and looking inside of the properties and it actually has a parent property right here so we can see that this is the parent 
this appearing platform is the parent. Also, when you name your variables, variables are typically written in camel case. And camel case is lowercase with every word following the first one being capitalized. So for example, just then a capital L for like, which is the second word, and then this would be the third word and that has a capital T. So you lowercase the first letter in the first word, then you capitalize the first letter in every single word after that. So we'll give you another example. We'll say here, then a capital I in is, and then capital A in another, and then a capital E in example. So here is another example, the first letter being lowercase, and then the first letter in every single word after that all being capitalized as well. You don't have to follow camel case, but it's highly recommended that you do that and always practice like that because that's what a lot of people do. And it's much easier to follow the proper principles that everybody else follows as well. So your code is very neat. So now we're actually gonna create a function and it's going to be the disappear function. So we can actually make the disappearing platform disappear. It's always best to group code for achieving a specific action into a function. A function is a named block of code that helps you organize your code and use it in multiple places without writing it all over again. So what we're gonna do is underneath the variable that we just created, we are gonna create a function. The way that we create a function is by once again saying local, but this time we're gonna say function. So we're saying local function and then the name of the function and the name of the function is going to be disappear followed by parentheses. And then you hit enter and then we have end inserted directly below a line. So this is how you create a function. Currently, we have no code inside of this function, but we will add it shortly. So this first line right here declares the function. This is the name of the function, and these parentheses right here are for including additional information as needed. For example, maybe we want the name of the part we want to make disappear. Then when we call this function, we would actually provide a name. It might be a little confusing, so I'm not going to get too much more into that, but I did want to provide an example to make it a little bit easier to understand. And then we have n right here that just indicates when the function actually ends, and then everything in between between these two lines right here is going to be what the function actually does. So let's take a look back at the properties for the disappearing platform part. When the platform disappears, it needs to be invisible and players need to fall through it. Now you might think, well, we could just delete the platform and that would work perfectly fine. The thing is though, is that that actually won't work because we want it to reappear later. So if we look back inside of our game screen and then let's look at our properties, let's look for a property called transparency. We can see it right under appearance. And if we drag the slider a little bit, we can actually see at one it becomes completely invisible while at zero you can see the entire platform like completely normal so by setting it to one that's how we can actually make it completely invisible and then eventually we'll set it back to zero when we want the platform to be visible again there's also another property if we scroll down to the collision section down here and that is called can collide if you guys remember in the last episode we actually talked about collisions when moving parts inside of the workspace so if we disable collisions and then we try to move this part around these parts can collide perfectly fine and go inside of each other. But if we have collisions on and we try to move the part, they're actually not able to go inside of each other because collisions are now enabled when we're moving apart. To explain the collision property of this specific part, when can collide is on, that means that a player could jump on this object right here and they will not fall through. But if the part is not collidable and it cannot be collided with, then the player will actually fall through the part. And we can test this by starting the game real quick and showing you an example. We currently set can collide to false for this part. So let's go ahead and jump on it. And we can see we fall directly through the part. Now that we understand how collision works, let's go ahead and actually enable collision for this part again, because with the script, that's how we'll actually manage it by setting the collision and also the transparency and then resetting it back to their original values. So going back to the script, we click that little tab at the top. Let's go back inside of the function and now we're going to say platform. Now we're calling the variable. And when we call the variable, we're basically using the value that it's set to. We can actually access the properties of the platform part by using a period. Now, a lot of the different properties actually come up. So we have the parent property right here. We actually have the name property right here and a lot of other properties and also events as well. The property that we're actually going to want to modify here is called can collide. So now that we have the property, we can then set the value of it. Normally we set the value by using this checkbox right here with no check that's false with a check that's true. So now we can either say true and that would be the check mark or we could say false and that would be no check mark inside of the box. And for right now we're going to set it to false and then we're going to get another property and we're going to say platform dot and this time we're going to say transparency because we're looking for the transparency property and remember we already saw that originally inside of appearance and we also were modifying that earlier and could see the difference and this time we are going to set it to one. And of course remember when we set it to one it's completely invisible but if we set it to zero it's completely visible. So right now 
we're going to set it to one. Also, giving you some further context on variables, another way to write this code that we have down here, such as platform.canCollide and platform.transparency, we actually don't need this variable at all. Now, don't delete your variable. I'm just showing you this for an example. But instead of saying platform, since we just deleted that, we could actually say script.parent, which is the original value that we set the variable to. So now we're saying script.parent.canCollide, and we're accessing the can collide property of the parent. And then we're also accessing the transparency property of the parent as well. But the reason that we use a variable is because instead of having to type this code twice, which is basically double what our original variable was, we're only typing script.parent once, and then we're typing platform two times. So it's much more cleaner. Now, of course, that doesn't exactly matter that much, but hopefully it gives you a slightly better understanding of variables if you were confused with them at all. So now we actually want to call the function. Once we've declared a function, we can actually run it by writing its name with parentheses next to it. Let's go below low where we create the function and let's just call the name. So we're going to say disappear with the parentheses, just how we named it up here. And that will actually call the function. So to test that this works, we can actually start our game. So remember, before we start the game, the transparency is zero and this is collidable. But if we start the game and let's go look at it, we can now see it's completely invisible. And if we try to jump on it, we fall right through it because of the collide property. So the reason that that happened is because we created the variable, then we created the function and we use the variable to actually do stuff. And then we actually call the function. Now we're we're going to do is we're going to create another function and this time we are going to call this function up here instead of disappear right below disappear we are going to say local function and we're going to name it up here this time once again with the parentheses then we're going to click enter and then that's going to create the end right below this line for us and now we're going to have a new line right here additionally let's delete this function call right here as well on the bottom line what we're going to do this time is basically what we did in the disappear function but instead of sending can collide to false we're going to set that to true and we're going to set the transparency to zero instead of one so we're going to say plus platform, which is calling the variable, then we're going to get the property, which is can collide, and we're going to set this to true. We could also copy and paste this code, but I'd highly recommend trying to not copy and paste that much code while you're learning. Typing everything out will definitely help you get used to it and further your understanding a lot quicker. Eventually though, once you're a lot more proficient with this and have a better understanding, then feel free to definitely copy and paste to save yourself some time. So now we're going to say platform once again, calling the variable, then we're going to get transparency, which is the property, and we're going to set that to zero to make Make it completely visible. Now we're actually going to learn about loops and looping code. What we want is the platform to constantly disappear and reappear every few seconds. There's multiple types of loops that we can use in code. The loop that we're going to be looking at right now for this project is actually called a while loop. A while loop runs the code inside of it for as long as the statement after while remains true. And we actually want this loop to run forever. So the statement is actually going to be true. To create a while loop, let's go down here just so I can show you for example. Let's go down here and we're we're going to say while true do and then we'll hit enter and that'll create sort of like a function but it's going to create the end right below this line for us and we're going to have a line right here so you might be wondering what is a statement what does that even mean so this right here while indicates that we're creating a while loop sort of like how when we create a function we say local function rather than saying local we just say while to indicate that we're creating a while loop then in between the word while and do we're actually creating a statement right here which is true another example of a statement could be something like we take our platform platform variable, then we get our name property and we could say if the name of that variable equals part, then do something. And what this statement is, is basically this loop will run until this is not true anymore. This definitely might be a little bit confusing, but I'm trying to kind of help you guys further understand what a statement actually is. Basically, the statement is whatever is going to make the loop stop. So this loop will run until true is no longer true, but you'll never actually be able to change true. So this is an infinite loop. In the while loop, we're going to actually need to write code to wait a few seconds between the platform disappearing and reappearing. There's actually a built in function called task dot wait which can be used for this so what we're going to do is we're going to say task dot wait then we're going to enter in a number which indicates how many seconds we want to wait so let's say we just want to wait three seconds and then we're going to do something whatever you do never make a while true loop without including a wait remember while true do is actually an infinite loop and this will never stop running and make sure that you don't test your code before you've put a wait inside of the loop if you don't put a wait inside of there your game will freeze because the studio will never have a chance 
chance to leave the loop or do anything else. So always make sure that you have a task that way inside of here when you're using an infinite loop, or basically you're just going to be repeating this billions of times every millisecond and it might crash your studio. So when the script starts up, it's going to also start up this infinite loop. So then when the loop starts, we're going to wait three seconds and then we actually want to make the platform disappear. So we're going to call the disappear function. Then we want to wait another three seconds and this time we actually want to call the appear function. Super simple, just like that. So now let's go ahead and test the code out by starting the game and let's make our way over to the platform and wait, we actually just saw it disappear right in front of us and now it reappeared once again. So let's go ahead and jump on the platform once it appears. There we go. And now let's wait until it becomes invisible and now we see we fall through it. That's exactly what we wanted. Awesome. So that is exactly what we wanted and we pretty much have a finished product. But let's say that we wanted to make this like three different times just to kind of make it a little bit different and cooler. What we could actually do is we could just duplicate this current part that we have with the script inside of it by hitting control D. Then we drag it a little bit over and then we could duplicate it again. And there we go. Now we have three disappearing and reappearing platforms. And we can start a game to verify that this does work. And if we just zoom out, we can see all three disappear at the same time and all three reappear at the same time after three seconds. Anyways, with that being said, we're done with this chapter. If this video did help you guys out or you guys did enjoy it, make sure you guys smash the like button. If you guys are new around here and you guys want to see some more Roblox development content, make sure you guys hit the subscribe button and turn those post notifications on. Additionally, I do have a Patreon. If you guys would like to support me and gain access to a lot of my scripts and my other videos, there's a link down below in the description. You guys can check out my Patreon and support me if you're feeling so kind. With that being said, I hope that you guys have a great day and I'll see you guys in the next video.